updated contact information. That is how we notify parents when something is occurring on campus. And to follow Victoria ISD and our law enforcement partners on Facebook. At this time, I will open the floor for questions. We ask that you please come to the podium if you have questions and you will need to turn the mic on. Yes, uh, no life-threatening in injuries to my knowledge. Um, and I don't want to get into the, the weapons or anything like that, but that's what's under investigation right now. There's one in custody for that. Um, so I would like to ask a little bit more general about the process, uh, if you will. Um, you said something about the DPS uh, scanning social media. Are there any uh, position specific, I guess positions, somebody in particular uh, there, there's people in DPS's criminal investigation unit um, that are here. They're local, and, and they work well with our officers daily. They're constantly trying to stay ahead of it, um, so they're a valuable resource, no doubt. And so um, just for my own knowledge, what is that process from they assess a threat to contact, um, and from that point, what is the next steps of the investigation? As far as in a, any immediate, I mean, each threat can be a little bit different. Um, if it's somebody that we're aware of, obviously we want to locate that subject right away. A lot of times it's, it's an unknown person, and that's where DPS is able to help us track down from, you know, IP addresses and stuff like that to try to figure out where this originated from so that the, the proper subject's dealt with. Okay. And, um... So uh, at Channel 25, we've reported on a few different incidents at local schools in the past several weeks. Um, one on September 12th, or two on September 12th, Cave Middle School and uh, Victoria West. Um, on September 10th, Victoria East and uh, Patty Welder on uh, September 19th. So could you just explain, a lot of those ended um, with the conclusion of being false reports. Um, what's the assessment process there? Uh, from the investigation, how do you determine that? What do you mean, the assessment process? Uh, so, uh, once the investigation, uh, I know at least, um, I know the Patty Welter in September 9th resulted in uh, the claim of being a false alarm of social media posts. Okay. And I guess I was just wondering how. Yeah, I mean, everything we take seriously, okay? Um, it's not just automatically deemed a, a false alarm. Those investigations continue well after the effect, the, fact that an arrest may or may not have been made um, and they're still ongoing investigations but usually there's enough determined on the scene that you know we have the subject that we need as far as in the offender or sus suspected offender and uh, we we make an arrest on that right there and then it continues on uh, but that uh, handles it for that particular moment um, I believe well, so what is the usual timeline, um, you know, from first notice on social media to arrest, generally? That varies. Um, there's times there's a, a threat the night before that nobody's even aware of. Um, so we're kind of, you know, the clock is running against us, so to speak, when we learn about it that morning. Um, and then there's times on campus where when we were notified within minutes, we had somebody in custody. Um, so it, it just varies, depends. Did we have any questions from any other media partners or any community members that are here today? Okay, with that, we will close out this press conference. Thank you.